everybody, welcome back to the Workman's Whiskey. I'm Bobby. Uh, today's whiskey I'd like to, to uh, review is uh, something new. You know, I mean, you guys uh, who watch my channel, you know, uh, you know that I like a kind of a history, you know, historical kind of whiskey. Good whiskey, you know, affordable whiskey, but uh, the story means something to me too. I mean, I love my history, so, um, you know. Old Crow, Old Overholt, George Dickel, Jack and Jim, um, you know, several others. Uh, I just, I love history. And uh, it's kind of funny because today I want to review a whiskey that uh, it's uh, kind of just now making history. Uh, it's called JR Revelry. See the label right there. And uh, JR Revelry, it's a. Uh, it's, uh, it was put out by a guy named uh, Jesus Ricardo uh, Tapia, uh, the JR here on the label, also known as uh, Rick Tapia. Um, and uh, he, uh, he came to the U.S. From, uh, from Peru when he was five years old, uh, moved to New York with his parents. And uh, as he grew up, he, um, he had a dream. You know, he, uh, he wanted to produce his own uh, bourbon in the, in the United States and uh, he worked in the bourbon industry for a long time and uh, you know kind of uh, you know took bits and pieces of what he learned and uh, perfected it to uh, to the bourbon that he always wanted to make and uh, that's the product we have here JR, uh, JR Revelry and uh, they uh, they produce it at the uh, at the uh, Seagram's Distillery. And um, let me read you a little bit about it. So uh, it says, uh, J.R. Revelry. In the historic part of Nashville, I set out on my own American dream to craft the kind of bourbon I love most. The result, uh, the result is this bottle of J.R. Revelry. The soft, subtle flavors come from whiskey and wood alone with no heavy elements and all natural uh, filtering for an extra smooth finish. It's a small batch bourbon with true independent spirit, which I hope to continue by opening my own distillery one day. Enjoy it with my thanks, Rick, uh, proud founder of JR Revelry. It says, uh, uh, bottled by uh, La Bodega International, uh, Nashville, Tennessee, distilled in Indiana, and uh, also aged less than four years in oak. Um, it's a 90 proof. Uh, bourbon, which is 40% ABV, or uh, sorry, 45% ABV, um, and uh, let me tell you guys, this is really good stuff. I mean, I opened it uh, last night, and uh, you know, I was doing a little research, wanted to, you know, find something that I hadn't tried before, and uh, went to the store and saw this sitting on the shelf, right at 30 bucks. Uh, that's our kind of uh, cut off, although. I'll uh, be reviewing a few um, pretty soon here that are uh, a little more expensive. We'll call those payday whiskeys, uh, if you guys don't mind. Um, you know, I like to review a few of the, uh, you know, a little bit more expensive whiskeys that I uh, that I enjoy. Anyway, um, this one was at thirty bucks, and it was the last bottle on the shelf, uh, you know, the very last one. And uh, you know, I was reading up on. Uh, on uh, Rick Tapia and uh, his story, you know, he uh, coming here, as I said, from uh, um, from Peru when he was five years old with his parents, um, grew up with a dream, and uh, he's the first Latino-born um, craft distiller uh, in, in the United States history. And uh, I think that's pretty, uh, you know, that's pretty historical in itself. Uh, new history, but you know, history is history, and uh, I appreciate that story. Um, Rick Tapia, uh, one of his one of his goals was to um, to make everything about this whiskey in the United States. Um, everything about it, the product, of course, uh, made here, the, the bottle, um, the label on the bottle. Um, you know, everything they use to make this whiskey uh, comes from right here in the United States. And that was important to, to Rick Tapia. Um, 
part of the American dream that he had. And uh, I really appreciate that. So um, this review goes out to him. Uh, take a look at the uh, color here. As I said, it was uh, this whiskey was only aged for uh, for less than four years in oak, so you know, not quite four years. And the color is uh, it's not a, a really light color, but it's not dark either. I'd call it a a medium amber. On the nose, you get some uh, some corn sweetness. I'm getting some uh, you know some. Uh, Maple or uh, maple and uh, caramel, caramel notes. Some baking spices, guys. Um, you know, talking back about uh, apple pie at, you know, the, at Christmas or uh, Thanksgiving. Just smells like a good holiday whiskey, guys. And with uh, with Christmas right here, and you know, other holidays people uh, celebrate. You know, uh, it's a good whiskey. Definitely good whiskey, 90 proof. Let's take a taste. And on the, on the palate, guys, you get those baking spices, you know, some cinnamon, some, uh, Maybe some clove, some uh, you know, some nutmeg. Almost like a, it's almost got like a mold cider uh, taste to it. You know, like an apple cider. And it's uh, it's just really good. I mean, it's it's soft as the uh, back of the bottle says. He says the soft subtle flavors come from whiskey and wood alone. And it's a it's a soft whiskey, guys. It's almost got like a velvety. Um, character about it, you know, in the mouth, um, and, uh, you know, I'm getting, uh, I'm getting a little bit of oak in there, and, uh, you know, I mean, the things that come through the most the baking spices, as as I said, some uh, some fruit, you know, talking apples and pears, um, back to the uh, kind of apple pie or apple cider um, character about it. Um, that oak, it's just a really good balanced whiskey, guys. The spot between the spiciness, you know, or the the spices in there, the uh, the fruit. The uh, the sweetness, you know, it just it's really really good. Um, I'm actually a little bit surprised. I don't know the uh, I don't know the mash bill on this, but uh, you know it does have that spiciness. Like I said, the uh, the baking spice, but I don't get the the rye spice that much. Um, you know, which is okay. I mean, I you know I don't need everything to be rye heavy. You know, I do love rye, but. Um, I'm not getting as much of the rye spice as I am uh, the other spices, and uh, but it's it's a really good whiskey, guys. I mean, thirty bucks. Uh, I would definitely give this a shot if you can find it. I know it's not available everywhere yet. I have a feeling it will be available uh, pretty quick here. I mean, it's uh, I've heard people talking about it. You know. Uh, in the last several days, um, shoot, I mean, getting to the store and finding one bottle left on the on the shelf, I mean, everything else was, uh, you know, had, had at least a few bottles left. This one, last bottle, I mean, I thought I better, uh, better try it out while I could, and I'm, I'm glad I did. Um, and uh, this one, as I said, goes out to Rick Tapia, um, you know, cheers to you, sir, for for achieving your dream, and I hope uh, you know. I hope you uh, continue to do so, and um, hope you open your own distillery one day. Although that's pretty cool that you're uh, you're making this stuff at the uh, Old Seagram's Distillery, which has a great history of its own. So, anyway, if you guys can find 
uh, JR Revelry. Buy it, definitely buy it. Um, and, uh, you know, until next time, cheers and Merry Christmas.